Alright, so by now I've made a few Oscar ranking videos on individual actors. Now it's time to break down certain decades in the acting categories at the Oscars. My name is Brian Rowe, this is the Awards Contender, and it's time to rank the best actor Oscar wins of the 2010s. What do I think was the best? And what was by far the worst? Let's start with number 10, Rami Malek. Bohemian Rhapsody. You know, play it like you wrote it. Well, I did. I wrote that part. Taking the piss. Okay. Are you happy? I think it's beautiful. It's almost perfect. So last year I made a top 10 worst acting Oscar wins of all time video, and I did put Malik in there. I did not like this win at all. It was especially weird how he swept the season. Like, did he miss anywhere? From Golden Globes to the Oscars, he just won Best Actor over and over again for a performance that's honestly very awkward and cringy and has not aged well at all. It's especially maddening in that the following year, Taron Egerton in Rocket Man, I thought gave a much better performance, and he wasn't even nominated in Best Actor at the Oscars, but Malik wins? The night Glenn Close is on her seventh Oscar nomination, and she still can't win, God love her, but Malik just beats everybody in his category as expected as if he had no competition. But there are much better performances in the category, especially Bradley Cooper for A Star Is Born. We wouldn't have this guy constantly in search of his elusive Oscar if we had just given him the gold trophy for A Star Is Born. That would have been a much better win than Malik in Bohemian Rhapsody. That movie's okay, I don't hate it, but all the love it got that award season was totally unwarranted. Thank you guys so much. I may not have been the obvious choice, but I guess it worked out. Uh... <laughs> Number nine, John Dujardin, The Artist. So here was a movie very much of its moments. At the end of 2011, early 2012, we all said, let's reward the silent film. Like somebody made a feature film that resembles the silent movies of yesteryear. And while that was a really cool endeavor, and I did enjoy the movie when I saw it more than a decade ago, I haven't really thought about it since. In a very strong year for film that was 2011, I don't think the artist necessarily is the best. Of that amazing crop that included The Tree of Life and Moneyball and The Descendants and films that weren't even nominated for Best Picture, like Drive and Shame and The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the artist seemed like a movie everybody was voting for because it was the cool thing to do and because of the Weinstein machine of advertising dollars, everybody felt compelled, in a way, to love this movie, even if it wasn't really worthy of all that acclaim. I do think the Jean Dujardin Oscar win and Best Actor is kind of weak. It's a courageous performance. He does a good job. Not everybody could have played that role. It's just not very memorable, I think, especially compared to the other people in his category. I do think this should have been George Clooney's best actor win for The Descendants. And where has Jean Dujardin gone? Like, he's kind of fallen off the map. And so, yeah, like, it's okay. I don't hate this win, but it's not one of the best of the decade in Best Actor. If George Valentine, Valentine could speak, he'd say, Wow, oh, putain, génial! Merci! Formidable! Merci beaucoup! I love you! Number eight, Gary Oldman, Darkest Hour. Let it end only when each one of us lies choking in his own blood upon the ground. So I don't know about you, but there's something kind of cynical about this Oscar win. It felt like Gary Oldman woke up one day and said, how am I ever going to win an Oscar? Hmm. Let's play a famous real life figure that doesn't look like me at all. And I'm gonna have to have lots of prosthetics all over my face and body to bring this guy to life. Have it be a very slow, awards friendly period drama. I still can't believe Darkest Hour got into Best Picture. I of course saw it in a theater. It was my duty to see all the Best Picture nominees. 
And boy, compared to everything else in 2017, Darkest Hour was a slog. I don't remember anything about it besides the look of old men as Winston Churchill. As I just talked about in a recent video, three of the best acting Oscar nominations of the decade were that year in Best Actor, Daniel Day-Lewis for Phantom Thread, Timothy Chalamet for Call Me By Your Name, and Daniel Kaluuya for Get Out. Any one of those three wins in Best Actor in early 2018 would have been awesome. But instead, we give Oldman kind of an obligatory Oscar for Darkest Hour. Of course, he's an amazing actor, and I'm happy he has an Academy Award. I mean, so many great performances throughout the decades, but his Oscars for that movie? I just, I don't feel great about that one. I say to my mother, thank you for your love and support. Put the kettle on. I'm bringing Oscar home. Number seven, Matthew McConaughey, Dallas Buyers Club. Now that's the shit that'll rot your insides. What a surprise, FDA approved. I might be kind of an outlier on this one. I haven't heard much hate or dislike for this Best Actor win, but I wasn't a big fan of it at the time, and I don't really like it that much today. Kind of like with Darkest Hour, in 2013, I thought the weakest of the Best Picture nominees was Dallas Buyers Club. There were elements of the movie I admired, but as a narrative overall, I thought it only worked in fits and starts, and I wasn't so enamored by those performances. I, of course, was impressed by the physical transformations of both Jared Leto and Matthew McConaughey, but kind of like Oldman, to be honest, those performances felt a little bit awards baity to me. McConaughey swept the season for a few reasons. One was his performance in Dallas Buyers Club, but also because he'd had a truly staggering run there of a few films like Mud and Magic Mike and Bernie and Killer Joe and so many great roles, I feel like Dallas Buyers Club isn't as good as some of those. Like, I would prefer his Oscar win be for Magic Mike or Mud would be better, in my opinion. The other thing I struggle with here is that I've always believed Leonardo DiCaprio's Oscar win should have been for The Wolf of Wall Street, not The Revenant, necessarily. We're gonna talk about that in a sec. <laughs> I picked his performance in Martin Scorsese's three-hour epic, The Wolf of Wall Street, as the third best acting Oscar nomination of the 2010s. I really do believe that. That was such a stunning all-timer performance from DiCaprio, and it would have been his time if McConaughey hadn't been there. So yeah, I'm just like, I understand why people like that Oscar win for McConaughey. It's fine. But at the end of the day, I just don't think it was worthy of that sweep. So to any of us, whatever those things are, whatever it is we look up to, whatever it is we look forward to, and whoever it is we're chasing, to that I say amen. To that I say all right, all right, all right. Number six, Eddie Redmayne, The Theory of Everything. And the universe is getting smaller. All right. So what if... I reverse the process all the way back to see what happened at the beginning of time itself. So I have to be honest in saying that when I was putting my ranking together of the best actor Oscar wins of the 2010s, I was kind of shocked at how little I like most of these wins. Like going through the list, I'm not really passionate about any of the wins. And that's especially the case of the bottom five, including Eddie Redmayne for The Theory of Everything. Once again, an actor playing a real life figure in a biopic, end of the year release that people liked well enough. I enjoyed The Theory of Everything when I saw that in the theater. I have not seen it since. I have not thought about it since. And in a way, this might be the most forgettable Best Actor Oscar win of the 2010s. Going through the list a couple days ago, I was like, oh right, Redmayne. <laughs> like, that's right, he won an Oscar for Best Actor. In 2014, I just had so much more passion for two performances in Best Actor, one that got into the race and was a clear second place, Michael Keaton for Birdman. I think Keaton in Birdman is better than Redmayne in The Theory of Everything. And then my favorite performance of the year was Jake Gyllenhaal for Nightcrawler. It is still absolute batshit crazy 
that Gyllenhaal's best performance on film, by far, one that got him into pretty much all the precursor ceremonies, did not get him a Best Actor Oscar nomination. I mean, when you compare Eddie Redmayne in The Theory of Everything to what Gyllenhaal is doing in Nightcrawler, like, it's no contest. Like, there's no comparison. And Redmayne wins, and Gyllenhaal doesn't even get in to the final five? Like, give me an effing break. So this one bothers me because I do think someone else should have won, but Redmayne is good in the theory of everything. That's not a bad performance. He has some nice emotional beats, his chemistry with Felicity Jones, the movie has some nice cinematography, like it's fine. It's a whole lot better than his Oscar nomination the next year for the Danish girl. Whew. But yeah, I put this one pretty close to the middle. This, this Oscar, wow. <laughs> um, this Oscar. <sighs> Number five, Leonardo DiCaprio, The Revenants. <laughs> So, funnily enough, the only Blu-ray I own that I have in my collection over there of a Best Actor Oscar win of the 2010s is The Revenants. My experience with this movie was an interesting one in that when I saw it in a theater opening weekend, I loved it. I thought it was great. I put it on my top 10 list of 2015. And then I watched it six months later on Blu-ray, and it didn't have the same power at home. I found it kind of difficult to get through, almost, and I admire the DiCaprio performance. Tom Hardy is, of course, very good in the film, too. It's got some memorable scenes, that bear attack scene, the final fight, the cinematography is gorgeous, but I do think this movie works much better on a giant screen than it does at home, and watching it a second time, I wasn't as taken with the DiCaprio performance. Like, this did feel in a way as DiCaprio saying, okay, I really need to win an Academy Award. What do I need to do? I need to go into the wilderness and put my body through physical hell and exhaustion and blood and sweat and tears. And they'll finally just say, okay, for God's sake, here. Take a cult trophy. It did feel that way before the movie even came out. There were all these horror stories about the making of The Revenants. As it turned out, DiCaprio had no competition in the category that year. I mean, I guess Matt Damon for The Martian is the only other person who could have won. But yeah, Best Actor in early 2016 was kind of weak, and DiCaprio was on his, what, fifth nomination at that point? So it was time. It made sense. Even though he should have won for The Wolf of Wall Street, this is still a good win. It's not in the bottom five best actor wins of the decade, I think. It's definitely not number one or two or three. I think five is the right place for this victory. I think we're all very happy DiCaprio has an Oscar, but it could have been for Wolf of Wall Street. I thank you all for this amazing award tonight. Let us not take this planet for granted. I do not take tonight for granted. Thank you so very much. Number four, Colin Firth, The King's Speech. Perhaps the most fateful in our history, bugger shit shit I send to every household of my... You see, P is always difficult, even, even when I'm singing. I am as surprised as you that I have this Best Actor Oscar win ranked as high as I do. One of my favorite performances ever in the movies is Colin Firth in A Single Man from 2009. He got an Oscar nomination for that, lost to Jeff Bridges for Crazy Heart, then he gets nominated again a year later and basically sweeps the season, wins the Oscar. I kind of pretended he had won for a single man, but here's the deal. Here's why Firth is in number four here and not like seven or eight or nine. Even though I don't love the King's Speech, I have not seen it since it came out. I do think those three performances in the film are pretty top notch. Like, say what you want about the movie, Jeffrey Rush, Helena Bonham Carter, and especially Colin Firth are bringing it. Firth gets to be funny and dramatic and moving and inspirational. I like his scenes with Carter a lot and his chemistry with Rush in those scenes where he's being taught and he's practicing are pretty good. If I had been an Academy member, I would have voted for Jesse Eisenberg for The Social Network 
that film totally should have beaten The King's Speech in picture and director. That is a much better film in every way. I have seen The Social Network five or six times and I have had no desire to go back and watch The King's Speech. But Colin Firth is very good in that movie and it was a deserving Oscar win. I have a feeling my career's just peaked. Um, <laughs> um. Number three, Joaquin Phoenix, Joker. You think men like Thomas Wayne ever think what it's like to be someone like me? To be somebody but themselves, they don't. Now here is a performance an Oscar win I don't think I've ever talked about on the channel, Joaquin Phoenix for Joker. Once again, kind of like with Firth, when I started ranking these wins, I assumed this one would be around number five or number six. And I'm like, compared to the other nine, this is one of the better Best Actor Oscar wins of the decade, I think. Joker was a very divisive movie. I didn't love it. It wasn't in my top 10 list of 2019, but I do think that was a pretty astonishing performance from Phoenix. He had been bringing it in one movie after another for decades. He'd been nominated for a few Oscars. He's amazing in Walk the Line and The Master. And all throughout the 2010s, it's like we were getting closer and closer to his Oscar win. It just needed to be the right movie at the right time. And Joker was it. It just made sense. It was a mammoth blockbuster. What did it make more than a billion dollars? It's a physical transformation, an emotional transformation. I mean, he really goes there in that movie. That was not a performance that was phoned in at all. So many memorable scenes and images. I'm very curious to see what the sequel is going to be like with Lady Gaga. I really liked his speeches all season, and there wasn't someone else in the category. I was like, no, it should be going to them, obviously. That wasn't the case for 2019. I liked DiCaprio and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Adam Driver and Marriage Story, and especially Antonio Banderas for Pain and Glory. That would have been a cool win too. But Joaquin Phoenix, come on now. He needed to win an Oscar eventually. And this was, I would say, a pretty good movie and performance to have it happen. My brother wrote this lyric. He said, run to the rescue with love and peace will follow. Thank you. Number two, Daniel Day-Lewis, Lincoln. That's a rule of mathematical reasoning. It's true because it works. Has done and always will do. So I recently made an Oscar ranking video about Daniel Day-Lewis's six nominations, and I ranked Lincoln, a movie he won the trophy for, at number five. Like I had it pretty far down in that video. And here it is at number two in my ranking of the best actor wins of the 2010s. So I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'm not thrilled with these best actor victories from that decade. Holy cow. Still, how can you dislike this day Lewis performance in Steven Spielberg's film? I had some issues with Lincoln. It's not one of my favorites from Spielberg, not by a long shot. I admire the movie more than I like it. The cinematography, the costume design, the sense of place, and that day Lewis performance is pretty great. I mean, he totally loses himself in that character. You watch Lincoln and you see Sally Field and you see Tommy Lee Jones. You don't see Daniel Day Lewis in this movie. That is Abraham Lincoln. His stature, his presence, the way he speaks his moments of reflection, his moments of intense rage. Like this is a pretty astonishing performance. There's a reason there was no suspense at the Oscars in early 2013 as to whom was going to win Best Actor. Every performance in that category is a banger and could have won in a different year. I mean, think about it. You have Bradley Cooper in Silver Linings Playbook. You have Hugh Jackman for Les Miserables. Denzel Washington is very good in flights, and Joaquin Phoenix again is on another level in The Master. So it is kind of frustrating in a way that we had all these great Best Actor nominees fighting it out up against Day Lewis, who was never going to lose for Lincoln. If there was going to be one person who received three Best Actor Oscar trophies, it was going to be Day Lewis. And that third Oscar win for Lincoln is a great one. 
Stephen didn't have to persuade me to play Lincoln, but I had to persuade him that perhaps if I was going to do it, that Lincoln shouldn't be a musical. Huh. <sighs> All right. What's left? What have I left out? Oh, right. The number one Best Actor Oscar win of the 2010s is Casey Affleck, Manchester by the Sea. You don't understand. And I don't I'm know what to say. I know you understand. I, 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 I've got to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> So I have to do something I rarely do on this channel, and that is apologize. Because I had the wrong take a few months ago. When I made a video the top 10 times SAG got it right and the Oscars got it wrong, one of my choices in that video was Denzel Washington for Fences. I said I think he should have won the Best Actor Oscar that year and not Affleck. And I got a lot of hate for that one in the comments, and I have reflected on that opinion I had. I still do think Washington and Fences gives a very good performance. It was very much overshadowed by the Viola Davis performance that went on to win the Best Supporting Actress Oscar. But a few weeks later, I have reflected on that choice, and I got it wrong. Affleck is the right winner here. That became especially apparent to me when I was putting together this ranking. I mean, it was obvious. Going through the list, I was like, the best performance here is Affleck in Manchester by the Sea. That's the best win here by far for a few reasons. One, he is so emotionally devastating in that film. Affleck has given some good performances throughout the years, especially the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford, which he also got an Oscar nomination for in Best Supporting Actor. But Manchester by the Sea, written and directed by Kenneth Lonergan, released in 2016, is the apex of his career as an actor. He was perfectly cast in this film. He hits all the right notes. And it is a pretty remarkable performance. But for me, what makes this the clear number one choice is that it's not an awards baity performance in any way. There's no prosthetics. He's not playing a real person. You look at so many of these best actor Oscar wins of the 2010s, and they are so Oscar baity. They're basically begging awards voters, Academy members, give me trophies, please. Look at me. Look at my physical transformation. I'm playing a real person. Give me the Oscar now. And Affleck isn't doing that in Manchester by the Sea. It's more low key, reserved. There are many scenes in that movie where he's not saying anything and he's just listening for the most part, like that memorable dramatic scene with Michelle Williams. Denzel Washington in Fences gives the bigger, louder performance. And after he won at SAG, the Academy could have given Best Actor to Washington. It would have been his third win. It would have made sense in a way. But now having ranked these Best Actor Oscar wins of the 2010s, I'm saying right now I made a mistake in that SAG video and I'm sorry. As much as I do like that Washington performance in Fences, Affleck in Manchester by the Sea was the rightful winner at the Academy Awards. That is, by far, I would say, the number one Best Actor Oscar win of the 2010s. Of course, my mother and my father for mostly, usually believing in me and doing this. Uh, ben, I love you. You ain't heavy. Thank you all very much. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and let me know in the comments below what would be your ranking of the Best Actor Oscar wins of this decade, and we'll see you next time at the Awards Contender.